It is that time of year again. It is time for the minor league update. Starting things off with the Chattanooga Lookouts as they are taking on the Rocket City Trash Pandas. On the hill for the Lookouts is the right-hander Harvey Floyd, making his 26th start of the season. And he will be opposed by Rocket Panda starter Jack Kachanowitz, making his 15th start. Take a look at the Lookouts lineup on the day listed 1-2-9. We'll start things off top half of the third inning. One on, one out. Chopper right back to Floyd. He's going to turn it into a double play himself to end the top of the third. Then in the top of the fourth, it's Cortez hitting a ground ball over to Cesar Asturias Jr. They only get one out because he muffed the original ground ball to him, but then then... Unfor but fortunately, then he makes a nice play ranging to his right to end the fourth inning. Move things on to the fifth. It's Heidemann at the dish, chopping one at the second base. Nice charge by Cameron Cannon to end the fifth inning. Check things in with the look at bats. It is Charles DeLuca taking one out to left center field. This one's off the track, up against the wall. Easy two-bagger for the speedy DeLuca to lead off the inning. Then it brings up his Torres, and he's going to bloop one into center field. Lands in front of the center fielder. Nobody moves up though, so it's just back-to-back -back base, back-to-back uh, -back hits here. So first and second brings up Enriquez. Grounds one right side. They get the runner at second, but not doubling up Enriquez. So runners on the corners here. One out for Brian Morris, who lines one into center field. That's going to tag up the runner DeLuca from third base. He scores, and it's a 1-0 Chattanooga lead. Move things on top of the seventh. Harvey Floyd gets Warner Blakely to go down swinging on the big breaking ball. Top of the seventh, it's Alfonso Valdez, the power hitting outfielder, comes up and crushes one over the head of the center fielder of the Rocket City uh, double-A team here and picks up a triple for himself. So then it's going to be a ground ball from Palacios. That scores Valdez. It's now a 2-0 Chattanooga lead here. Then we bring on to the top of the eighth where Harvey Floyd is going to give up a one-out double from Heinemann. That's off the wall, so he's into second base here with one out. And that would now bring in Colt Keith out of the bullpen for the 51st time this season entering here for the lookouts and he would proceed to strike out Hale for out number two and then it would bring up Soto who comes up and flies one to deep left center field but Charles DeLuca ranging back makes the play and it's still 2-0 for the lookouts. Andy Walker comes on here for the 32nd time this season looking for the save and he would get that, just that as that's what we call a Louisiana fastball. It is Bayou. Strikes him out for, for the third out of the inning and the lookouts win this game 2-0 here over the Rocket City Trash Pandas, the Los Angeles Angels AA affiliates. Andy Walker gets the save on the day while Harvey Floyd picks up the win and player of the game honors with seven and a third Innings pitched, only six hits given up, three strikeouts, no walks, no earned runs. Only four hits on the day for the lookouts, but they counted for two runs, while the six hits for the Trash Pandas count for none. And now it is time to go over how our double-A team did this season down in the double-A South in Chattanooga. Starting things off with the most ABs on the team is Alfonso Valdez. He is a center fielder, played right field in the game, though. Uh, was not great on the season overall. Exactly a 700 OPS. He is actually a guy who's probably going to be getting a prospect profile next season, so we are not going to be talking too much about him here as we move things on to Brian Morris, who is yet another high-contact, almost no-pop player in our organization. He's a first baseman, corner outfielder guy, has a little bit of speed to a game as well. 279, 351 average OBP is pretty good. Just absolutely no slugging from him. OPS is only 725. Five. Could be a decent platoon guy against left-handed pitching someday. While there's Bruno Enriquez, the OBP bunt king himself, a 7.67 OPS on the year for him, the second highest average in AA South this season, and also the second highest OBP. He had the most steals in AA South, while Morris and Valdez were also top five. I've said it before, I really like his ratings. He could be a pretty fourth, out, pretty good fourth outfielder for us someday eventually. Still only 21 years old as well. While Joe Mack, not the best offensive season from him. Ratings are to the point where he might be on the big league club in 2026. Whether that's as Stevenson's backup or as the starting catcher, that is to be determined still, but it's probably going to be as the backup if I had to guess. While Marco Palacios... 
He was hurt for a pretty good chunk of the season. Only 256 ABs, only eight home runs. Ideally, you'd like to see him hit more of those home runs with his power rating, but so far it just hasn't translated into a high home run number. While Andre Lipschitz, Lipschitz, however you say his name, only 165 ABs in AAA, but he was really good in those ABs. 941 OPS, former Tennessee Vol. Probably going to try to get him some reps at first base next season because he is ideally not a third base, second base type of player. Well, now if we move on to the pitching side of things, starting off with Eric Ryder, who is a guy I've been putting off his prospect profile for quite some time now. We actually traded for him in season one or two. I forget which what season it was, but we acquired him in the, I think it was season two, because we was, yeah, season two, because James Paxton was sent to the Padres in return for Ryan Weathers and Eric Ryder. And it's just other players have kind of just taken priority on the uh, prospect profile list. So Eric Ryder, another solid season for him. Highest war among our arms. He's a very weird profile. He's got a B potential. He throws extremely hard. Five pitch mix, all of them pretty solid pitches. And he's a guy who, you know, I would be able to strike at a ton of guys with in-game, but he's never going to strike at a ton of guys in the sim because he has a pretty pitiful 44K per 9 rating and only a 46 hit per 9 rating, too. Limits walks very well, though, with a 76 walks per 9. And these high walk per 9 guys tend to be pretty good in the sim in this game. Although I will say, probably not going to end up being a starter for us in the big leagues. His best shot for making the big league club for us is probably going to be as a reliever. While Freddie Jones, there is a good shot he gets into the big league rotation quite soon. Very good gear for him. Will probably start next year in AAA, but he could absolutely be in the bigs at some point. He could be next year's uh, Stuart Bradshaw, if I had to guess. We're going to be losing Mally after the season, probably not going to be bringing back, and then just rolling with Green, Lodolo, Gonsolin as the three guys, and then Bradshaw as the fourth. So we're going to need a fifth, whether that's somebody like Chase Petty, or we've rolled back somebody like Brandon Williamson, or Logan Allen, or any of those other types of guys. Or maybe it's Freddie Jones at some point, because he is probably the highest upside of the guys we have in the minor leagues right now when it comes to pitching. We've also got James Ono, who was our first round pick in a 2024. Solid year for him in double A. He will be getting a prospect profile next season, despite being a little bit older. Uh, so not going to go too much in on him. Harvey Floyd, another good starter for us in double A. You saw in the game, had a very good outing. C potential guy, but pretty solid already. 20 years old out of Massachusetts. He was our third round pick in 2024. Definitely a depth option for us next season. Love his 76 six walk per nine guy like I said these high walk per nine guys are pretty effective in the sim and then Colt Keith is a guy like that as well he's a random pitcher we found in free agency over the offseason incredible name Colt Keith from Texas I mean it's perfect great season from him top five in ERA in the double-A South along with a few other of our starters yet another C potential guy similar to uh, similar to Floyd high walk per nine rating but uh, still definitely a guy worth keeping an eye on Andres Lozano is another guy we found in free agency. Had a very unlucky year, a 6 ERA for him, but only a 3-4-4 FIP. Struck out 9 per 9 as a starter. I think he actually went between the bullpen and the rotation this season, but he looks like Bishop from Mayans, if you've seen that show. He also will be getting a prospect profile next season for sure. And then there's Ethan Lindau, who is good out of the pen. Probably his best shot for us is being a lefty in the arm barn, though. And then last but not least, down in double-A, it is Andy Walker. He was our second-round pick in 2024, 21 years old out of Louisiana. Great 31 innings for him in double-A. 11K per nine, a sub-1 walk per nine. 261 ERA, 123 FIP, high K rating, very high walk per nine rating. He will start next year in triple-A, but he is very likely to end up in the big league bullpen at some point in 2026. And now it's time to check in with the AAA team, the Louisville Bats, as they travel out to take on the Twins affiliate, the St. Paul Saints. Toe in the slab for the Bats on the day is going to be the right-hander, Hubert Hammond, making his 14th start since getting the call from Double A. 
and opposing him will be Jorge Guzman, making his 19th start for the Saints. Take a look at the bats lineup on the day, listed 1-2-9. We will start things off with the Saints hitting on the day. So bottom of the first inning, it is Soler who comes to the plate and draws himself a walk to lead off the game for them. He'll take his base, then it brings up Celestino, who pokes one out to right field. So back-to-back -back base runners here for the St. Paul Saints. And it's nobody out still. It brings up Curtis Terry, who grinds one out to second base. Williams flips the short. Sweeney goes the first. It's a 4-6-3 double play. Two down runner on third. And Sabato comes up and hits one out to left center field. This one's going to get down into the gap. So a run does come in here for St. Paul as they make it a 1-0 lead. Bottom of the second now, it is Chance Sisko, former Orioles uh, catching prospect, who hits one out to left center field. This one is over the fence, a solo shot makes it a 2-0 St. Paul lead here, his sixth of the season. Move things on, top of the fifth now, it is Kent Suzuki, or Ken Suzuki, who is ripping one into center, right center field. This one's going to get down up against the wall, and he's going to trot his way into second base with a fleet feet. So then it's Evan White at the dish. He hits a ground ball at the shortstop, diving stop, but he cannot corral it, so it's going to be an infield single. So first and second, nobody out, as the Triana comes up and powers one to right center, but it is caught on the right before the track, so it does allow the runner Suzuki to tag up. Runners on the corners here. Callahan hits one at the center field. Once again, tagging up. Sack fly it makes it a 2-1 lead now for St. Paul. Bottom of the fifth, Lopez comes up. Grounds a ball up the middle. It is a base knock to lead off the inning for the Saints. Then it brings up Cavaco, and he hits one out to right field. That's going to get through the infield. Back-to-back -back singles here for St. Paul. Now still nobody out. It is Soler, the leadoff man, walked his last time up. This time he's taking a ball into the grass, short of the side and left center. A three-run blast. Busts this game wide open for the St. Saint Paul Saints. It's now 5-1. to one. The Bats do try to get things together here, though, is in the top of the seventh. Evan White rips one in the left field. Only gets a single out of it, though. Then it brings up Triana, who rips one down the right field line. This one's going to get down into the corner. Right fielder takes a tumble and allows the runners to move up an extra base. So second and third here. Nobody out for Callahan as he just flies one out to deep right field. This one's going to be caught right in front of the track, allow both runners to tag up here. So it's now 5-2. Now there's one out in the inning, and Jake Faria comes out of the bullpen here for the St. Saint Paul Saints. Ben Deluzio in the batter's box for the bats, and he's going to fly one out to deep left field. That's going to tag up Triana, and it's now a 5-2-3 game here as the bats try to battle back and get themselves back into the game. So it's a 5-3 ball game. Dylan Coleman comes on in the bottom of the eighth inning here for the 43rd time this season, and things did not go well for him. Curtis Terry slicing one just barely fair down the right field line, gets into the corner. That is going to be a two-bagger there with one out, and then it's going to bring up Sabato. Earlier in the game, he had a RBI uh, double, and he's going to come up here and hit an RBI single and make it a 6-3 ball game, so it's now a three-run lead for the Saints, and then it's going to be even more as Miller comes up and hits a ball to right field. This one just barely over the wall, but it does count. A two-run blast makes it an 8-3 lead here for the St. Saint Paul Saints. Not going well for Dylan Coleman. That would pretty much end things as the Saints do come away with the victory here 8-3 over our AAA affiliate of the Louisville Bats. You'll notice the numbers are messed up in the box score because I actually simmed the rest of the game after that home run. And, of course, that's just another glitch in the game now is apparently if you quick sim uh, half an inning, it completely eliminates all the other stats that happen in the game. But now it is time to take a look at how our AAA roster fared this season, starting things off with the bats of the bats, Alika Williams. Not the best season for him, but the most ABs on the team. I like him as a, as a player quite a lot, though. Decent contact, decent vision discipline. Could be a solid backup infielder for us at some point. David Westbrook, another disappointing season for him. If he's a good hitter, why doesn't he hit good? It's the question with him, as it always is. 
Uh, Triana, very good year in AAA, 874 OPS. Could be a solid platoon guy against right-handed pitching for us at some point if we ever needed that. While Tyler Callahan, pretty bad offensive season for him. He's been here since the start of this series, but he's developed enough to where he's still interesting to keep around. Well, Evan White, great in AAA, didn't really get a true shot in the big leagues. I'd probably bring him back if he wasn't coming off that deal the Mariners gave him. And just how this game works, they see that he's coming off like $5 million on his contract, even though he obviously was being overpaid. And just because he was making that amount of money, he's going to want basically the same amount of money or even a raise. So I'm just not trying to give like $5 million to a guy who's probably just going to be like a depth first baseman for us. And then of course there's Nolan Jones, the quad A man himself, probably going to be traded in the offseason if I had to guess, while uh, Joe Adele, also extremely disappointing, never figured out in the bigs for us, was bad in AAA and 239 ABs too. The whole point of sending him down to AAA was so he could tear things up and start progressing more with his ratings like we did with Sen Zell, so then when he came back, he could be better, like Senzel was, but unfortunately, Joe Adele, that's not what he's been doing, so uh, he might be on his way out in the offseason as well, while Trey Sweeney is finishing the season in his hometown up in AAA Louisville, only 55 ABs from him, for him in, in AAA though, so not too much to judge on, but he could be an option for a backup infielder for us next season in the big leagues. Now move things on to the pitching side of things. There's Brandon Williamson, who had an extremely mad season in AAA. Probably not a long-term option in the rotation for us, unfortunately. Uh, Peyton Battenfield, solid AAA year for him. He is currently on the 40-man roster. He could be a bullpen arm for us next season because we are going to be losing three of them in Lucas Sims. TJ Antone and Alex Reyes are all on expiring deals. Probably none of them are coming back. So uh, the pecking order of the bullpen is definitely going to be changing a bit next season. While Mitch Keller is a guy who we changed his fastball back to being a sinker like he is in real life, but still probably not going to be giving, probably not going to be bringing him back, probably giving up on him. Then we have Dead Neil Nunez, picked him up in the offseason as depth. Very solid in AAA for us, a 10K per 9, very solid hit per 9 and K per 9 ratings. Multi-inning guy, sinker, slider pitcher, another guy who could get looks for us in the big league club in 2026. Uh, Logan Allen, really mad year for him. He's basically taking the same path that Brandon Williamson has so far. I remember when I did that trade for Jones and Allen that a bunch of comments I got were just like, oh my god, how unrealistic, how insane. This is a trade I'm looking at from the perspective of real life and not this current universe. Oh my god, how awful. You ripped them off. And now all these guys just completely suck. But moving on to Hubert Hammond, the starter in the game, as you saw, got rocked a bit in the game. Overall, not a bad year for him, though. Started in double A, where he was absolutely on fire, way too good for that level. So we promoted him to triple A, and he was, like I said, pretty solid. Was our third uh, third selection in 2023's draft. We took him in the competitive balance round B. Like his ratings quite a bit, absolutely an option for the big leagues at some point for us. We've also got Dylan Coleman, who came over in the Brandon Drury trade dump in Season 1. He was like a 58 overall flamethrower back then, just kind of a guy who I was aware of in the game, because I think I had him in like very early portion of the Diamond Dynasty that I was playing. And I noticed that he was throwing really hard, and he had tight pants. So I like took a mental note of him, and then we ended up getting him in that deal. And he's just been in the minor leagues grinding away. He pitched in the big leagues a little bit for us when we first acquired him. But overall, he's basically been in the minor leagues grinding away, and he's improved a lot to the point where he's like a 70-something overall now. His ratings have gotten a huge bump. He's definitely like the top of my list for guys to be in the bullpen next season. And then we also have Xavian Curry, Xavian, however you say this guy's name. He signed in the offseason as depth, split the year between AA and AAA. His depth, he's got decent ratings, probably back next year as depth as well. But with that being said, that's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Cincinnati Reds franchise here on MLB The Show 22. This is the Minor League Update Edition. I've been your host, Jerseyborn, and I am saying... Denny Hamlin hates working class drivers who have to work their way up and grind their way for sponsors, and he's also too much of a coward to drive for his own team. 